Hello and welcome to Current Affairs on JTV. Today I'm joined by the distinguished human rights campaigner Peter Tatchell, who has also been a prominent campaigner for the BDS campaign about Israel and has spoken about that uh, many times in public. Peter, thank you for joining us on this subject. Why are you a supporter of BDS? Well, I believe that there needs to be a solution to the conflict between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Um, and I want to see you know, a negotiated settlement. I want to see a settlement based on peace, equality and justice. But I don't see any indication that the Israeli side, or the Palestinian side for that matter, are ready and willing to move. So I think that there needs to be action, non-violent action in the Gandhian tradition, to pressure Israel to come to the negotiating table and to make an offer that is realistic and that will at least begin to progress things towards uh, an end, end result. I'm saying this because I think as the stronger and most powerful of the two parties, the moral obligation is on Israel to make the first move. I know that's a big ask, but if you want a solution, I think sometimes people have to be humble, people have to be prepared to swallow their pride, people have to be prepared to take risks and gambles. And right now, when I look at the history, I see over the last seven decades, the Israeli state has expanded, expanded and expanded. The state of Israel has constantly expanded its borders and even today is expanding new settlements in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. Um, that process is undermining the quest for peace. It is weakening the people in the Palestinian side who want a settlement and strengthening the rejectionists. Because okay. the rejectionists will argue mm. that Israel is not a serious party to peace because it is not only not willing to offer any major concessions, it's actually expanding Jewish settlements in lands and areas right. where Palestinians I, traditionally I live. By the rationale, what you're saying there in terms of your, your, your thinking, but why would you therefore support a campaign, the BDS campaign, that is headed by someone, Omar Barghouti, who doesn't believe in a negotiated settlement? Well, the BDS campaign is a very diverse one. There is no well, one... Well, suggested if no, the... No, no, well, it's been founded by people. No, 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 no. You founded campaigns no. in the past. No, no. If the people supporting the campaign will look at what you believe in as part of what that campaign is, surely. No. If you look at the BDS campaign, boycott, mm. disinvestment and sanctions around the world and in different countries, there are many different variations of it. Just because people support boycott, sanctions and disinvestment doesn't mean to say they sign up to what one particular person uh, well, stands is, for. Well, there is an organised campaign and it is headed by Omar Barghouti. You recognise that, right? Yes, yes. Okay. And are you supportive of that campaign? No. You're not? So you think the official BDS campaign is wrong? Not, I don't support it. No, the official BDS campaign. I don't support it in its totality. I think there are some good and morally justifiable elements within it. I think that BDS is far better than war. And if we can make BDS work, I hope we will persuade more Palestinians to give up armed attacks upon Israeli civilians and look to the economic route as a way to get leverage against the Israeli occupation. It's a noble aim, but I think it's rather outweighed by the fact that, again, Mr. Barghouti, who, remember, is the co-founder of that campaign, uh, publicly welcomed the uh, stabbing intifada that occurred from 2015 onwards, saying it was a natural I, 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 Of course I disagree with that. Of course I totally oppose no, that. I've, but, I've condemned but, all attacks I, upon Israeli and civilians. And of course you would, and I understand that. But what I'm trying to draw out here is the fact that you're, you believe that supporting BDS will lead to a situation where violence will lessen, whereas if one of the most prominent leaders of it and the man who's most publicly associated with it is saying different things and saying that there won't be a negotiated solution but a one-state solution, uh, okay, where, where there is no Jewish state at all, that's not going to lead to that, is it? Surely that's going to encourage Palestinians to be more radical, not less radical. Well, I'll give you an analogy. There was a global anti-apartheid movement mm -hmm. which had an element of BDS within it. People in the anti-apartheid movement globally, had many, very many diverse opinions, strategies and tactics. Some supported BDS against South Africa, the apartheid regime, some didn't. 
Some supported a cultural boycott, some didn't. Some supported a sporting boycott, others didn't. Well, it was the same with the BDS campaign around the world. There are many different versions of it. I support the version that I believe in. I don't give sanction or authority to any other version. Well, it's slightly different. Let's leave aside for one second whether the, well, the term apartheid is correct in Israel versus South Africa. Let's leave that No, I wasn't making that okay. analogy. I was right. talking about the anti-apartheid campaign against Mo South African apartheid. Most people recognised Nelson Mandela and the ANC, most people, as being the lead players in this game. It would be rather like you saying you didn't back Mandela in the main campaign but went for an obscure fringe campaign that believed in some of the same things, but that wasn't the main issue. I mean, that's what we're saying here. You're saying ignore the main BDS campaign. Some of it's right, but not all of it. I believe in my version of it, right? Absolutely. I, you know, I, just because you believe in BDS doesn't mean to say that you sign up to all the ideas or policies of the founder or the main body of the organization. There are many different versions and I happen to subscribe to a version which is different and has different goals and objectives from the official campaign that was originally founded and that is also the view of many BDS supporters in Britain. They do not sign up to any idea to uh, eradicate Israel or to drive Israel into the sea. They do not support that. So your idea is simply to bring Israel to the negotiating table, that's it? Yeah. But what would you therefore say to the fact that Prime Minister after our Prime Minister has been at the negotiating table? You've had in the last 20 years Rabin, Perez, Barak, Olmert, even Netanyahu today, whatever you think of him, has said, come, let's talk. They didn't need BDS to get them there, they've said, come and talk. What's the issue? Well, of course, all those offers from Israel were hedged with all kinds of restrictions and all kinds of qualifications. But every deal, but, 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 every but, deal will come with that. There's, but, but, there's not but, going to be a deal that's going to have no restrictions. It's yeah. a deal, it's a compromise. Both sides will have to compromise, right? Yeah, but, but regardless... They will, both what, sides. What, whatever happened in the past, that is the past. We have to look forward to the future. And so we need to pressure Israel to come to the negotiating table to uh, set out a new plan uh, in Alves, so in, you think in the Israelis have to come up with a plan? They're the ones who have to come up with a plan? Well, both sides have to agree a plan, but mm. Israel does need to make some significant gesture to show that it is serious about peace. In my view, withdrawing from the settlements on the West Bank and East Jerusalem are a key component of that. Ending discrimination against Arab people in Israel is a key component. I mean, it's absolutely outrageous that 21% of the Israeli population is Arab, yet they own 2.5% of the land, even though they were the majority landholders in 1948. It's also outrageous, as the Org Commissioner said, the level of impoverishment in Arab communities in Israel is an absolute scandal. Israel is a very, very rich country, yet there are Arab settlements with no electricity, no running water, very poor education, and of course, so many of the Arab settlements, particularly in the Negev Desert, are being uprooted and forced out by Israel. That is not the kind of behavior that is conducive to peace. And the well, BDS that I support mm. is designed to get Israel to stop that behavior. But you're now lumping in two different issues. You're now suggesting that there is a linkage between Palestinian stroke Arabs living in Israel, who are Israeli citizens, and everyone uh, accepts they are in that way, versus Palestinians living in the West Bank and Gaza, who would presumably have their own separate state. Why would you link the two in that way? The two surely are separate issues. Uh, if you want peace, if you want peace, let's talk about the peace settlement and how that works, rather than the other issue, which I agree is important and there needs to be process made. But I'm puzzled as to the linkage between the two in this way, because you're suddenly suggesting, almost like a one-state solution, that everyone is actually connected after all. Well, I think Israel needs to address legitimate grievances that Arabs have inside Israel, and it needs to address the, what I believe are legitimate grievances of the Palestinians vis-a-vis -vis the settlements. Um, if Israel did address those two issues, I think it would send a signal that it was serious about peace and would put the rejectionists on the Palestinian side on the back foot and would empower those within Palestinian society who genuinely do want a negotiated settlement. 
Um, I think there are you know, uh, both aspects of that, internal, external. I think on the internal side, you'll find Israel, as with many uh, Western-style countries, has internal issues. The Arab one you've mentioned is one. Issues between uh, those Jews that came from uh, the, the Arab world versus those that came earlier from the European world. There are also issues there to resolve in that. There's a religious secular debate as well that has to be done there. I think the two might be different cases, but I want to focus on the external in the peace settlement for a second. You mentioned, for example, the, it's important to, to remove the settlements. But if you've looked at the previous peace deals, you will see the agreement but on both sides has been around the settlement issue. Israel will withdraw most of the settlements, there'll be redrawed line, etc., that have been accepted by both the Palestinians and Israelis. To my knowledge, not one of those peace deals fell apart because of a disagreement over settlements. They disagreed perhaps over the right of return, over water rights, things like that. But the settlements issue has been largely resolved. People know what the lines are going to be. So I'm puzzled why you think that's a major uh, impediment when it's been shown time and time again that's not why the Palestinians aren't signing the deal. Well, it is a current deal because currently the settlements are expanding. Well, the settlements expand. have been expanding. They make expand. uh, and, and, that, and that sends the wrong signal. When you're, when you're making the offer of peace, but expanding settlements on land that the Palestinians regard as theirs, the embryo of a new Palestinian state, that sends entirely the wrong signal. It says that Israel is not serious about a genuine settlement. It says that Israel is determined to maintain what it has and even make it more expansive, even, even to get more settlers onto that disputed territory. Even though it has agreed in the past to give up any of those lands it's now expanding on? Well, you can't say that and well, then to continue somewhere. to expand. Well, you can. <laughs> with, with credibility. Well, you can until you get a peace settlement that says those are the lines. That's surely the, the position we're at. I mean, the, that's the end point. Well, it, 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 the analogy would be to say that you know Hamas should be free to fire rockets until Israel Israel agrees. But I Hamas totally do, oppose. But Hamas I totally do fire that. rockets. That's the whole difference in that sense. Oh, and, and, and Israel does expand its settlements. But, but, but the point is, both sides recognise. Both sides recognise that that will cease when there is a peace deal. That's the issue. No, no, no. You can't get a peace deal if one side is firing rockets on Israeli civilians and other side is expanding settlements. That doesn't work. That doesn't about peace, that's about a continuation of conflict. Let me then come to one other uh, point. You, you, you obviously support BDS. So you actually think that Israeli academics should be boycotted. You think that um, any companies dealing with Israel should be boycotted in this area. Every, literally, there should be a blanket boycott on everyone. As you know, that's not what I've said. Okay. I've, I've favored yeah, well, you've a, given a, me very, a very selective, okay, so give a us very a selective BDS. Which is only on? Well, I think certainly there should be a boycott of any produce that's been made in the new settlements in the West Bank uh, and East Jerusalem. Um, I certainly think there should be a boycott of um, some Israeli institutions which are implicated in the occupation. Um, certainly I'd like to see a halt to Western military aid to Israel and I'd also like to see a halt to other countries aiding the military side in Palestine as well. Okay, so in, in a sense, what you're telling me really is you're, you don't really support the BDS campaign at all. What you support is a very selective sanction here and there. Well, it is a form of BDS. Yes, but a very minor form. It's rather, you know, it, it's, I wouldn't call it in the same spectrum. Uh, a lot. And for you to say you're therefore a supporter of BDS is well, a you can support. There's, there's, there's a big difference between supporting the principle and supporting a particular campaign. You know, we, we live in a democracy where there are very many diverse opinions and diverse movements, strategies and tactics. I have a particular form of BDS that I support. Others have a different one which I don't support. Very simple. You've led very nicely then to a final question. You've mentioned obviously we live in democracies, very diverse. Surely you can recognise uh, that of all the countries in the Middle East, um, and even in relation to the Palestinian Authority and Hamas, Israel is a diverse, vibrant, democratic society where there's a Supreme Court that will overrule the government, a free press that will hold it to account, elections where uh, everyone can uh, get turfed out of office back in again, where Arabs have major representation in the uh, Israeli parliament and beyond, a place where minority rights are respected, something I know is close to your heart. Why do you think it's therefore sensible and fair to be boycotting of that free society when it's got its own institutions that can do that for you? Well, I've said many, many times that I acknowledge and respect the democratic gains and the civil rights gains that exist in Israel. 
which are far better than exist in any neighboring Arab state. And I do disagree and have many times criticized pro-Palestinian activists who fail to speak out against the grave human rights abuses that are happening in the Palestinian Authority area on the West Bank and in the Hamas-dominated Gaza Strip. Uh, also, of course, you know, the surrounding states have a very poor record and it is wrong for uh, pro-Palestinians to single out Israel without also recognizing the grave human rights abuses that happen in the Palestinian territories and in neighboring Arab states. But that does not mean that Israel can have a blank check. It doesn't end or resolve the issue of the expansion and occupation that has existed and still exists to this day. You know, a democracy is a great important thing and I salute Israelis who have made that possible. But it, is not, it does not take away from the fact that Palestinian people have been dispossessed from their land. Hundreds of thousands of them and new settlements are continuing to dispossess um, Palestinian people from their land. That is the bottom line to me. Other people may have other different bottom lines, but that is the bottom line for me. I, I, I hear everything you've said, Peter. Um, I understand your point of view in that regard. I, I note one thing you said, which is I wish that you know, many more in, in, in the movement supporting Palestinian rights actually did those things in the Palestinian Authority and beyond. I think a lot of your fellow travellers in this campaign perhaps don't share your, uh, your, your noble views in this. Well, they're not my fellow travellers. Um, they're people who also support the human rights and right to self-determination of the Palestinian people. Well, and, and I don't agree with all of them. And I think some of the stuff that some of them have done is wrong. And I've said so, I've spoken out many, many times. You know, I think we have to have moral authority uh, within the pro-Palestinian movement, uh, a moral authority that's based upon principles of equality, peace, and justice for all. And that we have to recognize that Jewish and Arab people have a claim to this disputed land. And there has to be a solution that provides security and equality for all of them. Peter Tatchell, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you as well. We'll see you again soon for another episode of Current Affairs on JTV.